We're down at Swan Valley in Yateley today, and wow, this place is a proper bit of me. Like, real sexy, overgrown, deep margins, crystal clear. And I, I just can't wait to put a lead in the water, really. Somewhere that I've never been to before, but I have seen some of the fish there at holes, and they are real scaly bangers, and there's some big ones too. We've only got four or eight hours to try and put fish on the bank. It's worth mentioning the conditions aren't great. It's about a thousand degrees. Like, walking around today, I've been sweating my back out, but I think, I think there's a good chance, hopefully, they're not in that mode where they're just moping around in the weed and not up for doing anything. I think this evening or throughout the, the hours of darkness could be a really good opportunity. Just got myself into my swim, and the reason I've chose this swim is because it offers a really good view for the morning. There's a real nice weed bed across the front of it where I've seen some fish already, and also there's a snag line across the right hand side of it that just looks mega like. I've been around there, had a look in there, I see a couple of fish moving through there as well, so it does look good, uh, but yeah, I really do need to get a rod in the water now. When it comes to the leading, I use a bare lead as opposed to a marker folk. The last thing you want is a marker folk getting caught up in all the weed and that, you know, you want direct contact to that lead to the bottom. First thing I do, especially on a new lake, I will dissect that swim apart. You know, I'll, I'll start at the furthest point and work my way back. Um, that way I can, I can make a, a very big swim, a small swim, you know, I, I don't want to be starting short and finding spots and then going further, you know, otherwise you're going to be messing around with clips. What I always say is, you know, I, it's my swim, I will take as long as I need. You know, some people get put under pressure by themselves almost, thinking people are looking over and that, look how many leads he's putting out. I say, it's my swim, I will let it up until I'm right. You know, I've got to be confident that them spots are the right spots that I want to be fishing. So I, if I need to put 100 leads into a swim, I'll do so. The first thing I do is make a foot marker, for obvious reasons, you know, you don't want to forget where you've been casting from because as soon as you move left or right your horizon markers move as well. The places I'll be aiming for are the likely areas that you think fish are going to turn up or places that you've physically seen fish either that morning or that day. I wouldn't suggest throwing lead straight at, at fish when they're still there. The type of thing that I'm feeling for is a nice clean drop through the water column. If you feel any restrictions on the way down you're not fishing. Even if you get the crack at the bottom you've gone through weed. When it is the bottom, I'll take note of what it really feels like. Just that thump alone can tell you what a spot is. If it's a real crack, you're on the gravel. If it's softish, you know, it could either be weed or it could be in the silt. I'll take a few st steps to the side once the lead's down and give it a nice slow pullback. I see so many people just whipping that, that rod back real quick. And you're pulling upwards at an angle. You've got to imagine that, that lead's down in the deeper water. If you're pulling upwards on a four or five ounce lead, whatever, it's gonna lift up off the bottom, so I'm dead slow at that, that especially them first initial foot anyway, because that's potentially where the rig's gonna be. I wanna know, that's the most important part of the pullback, I wanna know exactly what's on that bit of the spot. Once I've found the perfect spot, I'll get the wrap straight away. There's nothing worse than then looking for another spot and either getting cut off or crack off, you know, these things happen. So as soon as I found that perfect spot, I'll wrap it up and know it into my phone. Sorting the rods out now, getting the rigs on and what have you. Baits on. I've opted to face the left hand spot, the further one. It's in that sort of horseshoe of the weed. It's a little bit choddy, so I'm going to put a, um, a hinge on that. It's clean, a bit shorter, but yeah, the back of the spot just felt really nice. It's silty gravel, it sort of comes up about a foot, I'd say. The more have come towards me. But yeah, just some silty gravel at the back there. I'm not quite confident. 
that a noodle would be fishing on the bottom. So yeah, I'm gonna put hinge on that. That's the only reason I use pop-ups. Some people, um, I think, just don't understand why they use them, but for me personally, I use pop-ups because I just wanna get the hook off the bottom so I know it's fishing. But apart from that, if the spot's real queen queen, there's no reason I'd want that hook looking unnatural. You know, popped up off the bottom, I want it to match all the other freebies. But yeah, the other two spots are nice and clean. So it's noodles all the way with them. Rods have all gone out sweet, could not have been happier. What I've decided to do is fan the rods across the swim. Because I didn't get down at feeding time, I don't know where the fish were. So I've decided to fish three different spots and then hopefully in the morning we'll sort of zone in on the area where they are. I mean, <laughs> the best thing that could happen is all three spots are rocking, but yeah, hopefully at least one of them spots produces a fish. And then maybe tomorrow it might be a case of honing two rods or even three rods into that one zone where the fish turn up. First thing I had to do was go around and bait that marginal rod that I'm fishing over to the, to the far margin. Just because I didn't want to get the rod out and then have to walk out to swim, obviously I can't leave an unattended rod. So I went around there, baited that up and got that rod out. A mega little marginal shelf there, honestly so clean and I'd be really surprised if that rod don't go. I've got it fishing locked up on the, uh, on the old leg core as well. The other two rods are just fished out in the open water but up tight's that real big weed bed there. We have seen fish amongst that and they're really starting to turn up now, so it really looks good for a bite. Uh, just about got the bait in before it's going dark. Put about 10 spawns over each, each rod. You've got to think, there's only one hook bait among all the bait. So I just went for 10, 10 spawns, see how it goes. You know, if the fish really turn up and they're having it tomorrow, then I know tomorrow night's plan is going to be give them a load and vice versa to that. If there's only a few fish feeding, I'll probably just limit the amount of bait. But yeah, everything's gone absolutely bang on and I'm confident, fingers crossed.
wow, what a morning it's been. I am absolutely buzzing. I've got my first Yately fish in the net and it's been a crazy morning really. From last night, about midnight, we've got some crazy thunderstorms that came over, big electrical storm and then this morning there's flat calm and clear and it just seemed lifeless. I started seeing fish just showing over the other side and I've, con well, I am still contemplating a move, um, but you know, this fish can't kind of change things. But um, yeah, I've seen a few showing over there and then a little bit of sheeting over my middle rod and then literally out the middle of nowhere, it's just gone bang and just, uh, yeah, screamed off, buzzing. I've got my first one in the net, just gonna let it have a little rest, get all the mat and that prepped up and uh, yeah, get her out for some picks. Just over 40, 40 pound two. 40 pound two ounces, buzzing. <laughs> wow, I am buzzing. Just over 40 pound. <laughs> Haven't been to Yately before, but wow, have I been missing out. This is an absolute mega carp. <sighs> Born away, mate. <laughs> what a carp this is. Proper old gnarly one. Oh, his tail. <sighs> Absolutely buzzing with this. Wow. Still going to make that move though. Definitely. The fish were definitely on the other side of that weed. Definitely going to make that move over there. But yeah, nice little bonus one. First morning as well. <laughs> Happy days. Last hook. <laughs> Look at that. What a carp. Right now. What's the chances of that? <laughs> Literally just put that other fish back. Bang, that right hander's gone. I'm on the margin. 
Um, buzzing. It's a little common. Just went to have a little rest. Gonna have a quick cup of tea. And uh, yeah, definitely gonna get on the move now. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit mad. Some people might think, oh, why, why are you moving after you've had two fish? But after seeing them fish over there, it, one of them was a real good one as well. And the, the fish that were here this morning at feeding time f felt almost like there was two, maybe three fish about. And luckily I've picked one up. It does look like they've started to drift in, in here now, but I feel like that real morning bite time was definitely, there was a good group of fish over there and maybe even chance of a hit. I mean, it's, a, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's a catch-22 situation, but you've just got to go with your gut. That's what I always do. I don't just move for the fun of it. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're going to do. But get this little common out, do some picks, and uh, yeah, get packed up and on the move. Brand new coin, this one. What, mid to upper double? Banger. Just made the move after slipping that one back. Boy, it weren't easy. You know, 30 odd degrees today. It's uh, definitely worth the, the extra effort though, especially after seeing them fish out in this zone this morning. I see this is a perfect opportunity to have a quick weather round. All the fish are held up in the weed. I've seen some around in the back bay there, just chilling. I can't see anything out in the pond fizzing and showing as they were this morning. So that tells me, you know, have a little lead up, see if you can find them zones that them fish are in. And uh, yeah, look at maybe getting some rods out for this evening. Generally on day tickets, I notice that people sometimes just like to turn up, get the rods out, have a barbecue or whatever, you know, which, you know, it's each to their own. People use fishing for different reasons, but for me, it's all about that hunt, that finding the fish and getting on them. So I will move if I need to. Location is literally key. If I feel like I'm not on the fish, I've got to get on my toes and find them. Two fish that I caught this morning were both caught on the noodle rig. This is my go-to balance bait rig that I fish over any hard bottom. The reason I fish it on a hard bottom is because the hook is going to be laid flat on the lake bed. If there was any debris and chods and things on that spot, I'd be opting for a pop-up because I wouldn't want that hook to get caught up in anything. It needs to be fishing all the time. First thing you might notice is that big shrink tube kicker and the shape of it. The reason I do that is because when it gets ejected out of the fish's mouth, it turns straight away at the, 
just there's a soft pellet just behind the jawbone on the fish's mouth, and it, that's exactly where you want to be hooking the fish. I always fish it up between six and eight inches in length. Anything too long is real tangle prone, and also it can fold back on itself when it's setting out. I always use a semi-stiff material. That's because of this resetting. It has to reset no matter what. On the cast, whether a bird picks it up, a fish wafts it, it gets ejected, what have you, I've got to know that that hook is fishing as far away from that lead system as possible. I use a tungsten anti-tangle sleeve just to give it that kick away uh, on the cast and also to help this reset in properties. Little tungsten dropper in the middle there and another little bit of putty just on the parting. It all works together, all kicking away nicely every time. It's exactly why I use a balanced bait and not a heavy bottom bait. If I were to put a heavy bottom bait on there, it could quite easily fall on the lead system. Balanced bait and all these putties all working together with a semi-stiff material make sure it kicks away every time. Moving up to the hook end, I fish this rig ball back style. The reason I do that is because when the, when the bait's ejected, it'll come round and put weight down onto the hook point, as opposed to if you were to fix it up here, it'll take weight off the hook point. Also, I use a nice big hook, nice size four minimum for me. Uh, if the fish are telling the difference between a size four and a size six, we might as well give up now. You know, like a nice, big, strong, sturdy hook, you know, these are big fish, you know, that I put a lot of time and effort in for. And the last thing you want to do is lose a fish to a, to a hook pull or something like that. In terms of tying it, it might look a bit complex, but it's actually not. It's really easy to tie. To start with, I'll use about 12 inches of material and then I'll strip the coating back off about four inches of that. I then make my hair, tie on a, a rig ring, and I always like to leave a little bit of space between the rig ring and the bait. So if it's a 16 mil bait that you're putting on, I'll probably make an 18 mil size hair. Then I'll do a knotless knot, generally four turns. And I say generally because it's usually between four and six turns. It all depends on how much material you've used to make your hair, so it really does vary. But once you've tied a few, you sort of get used to it, if you know what I mean. You want it just so the, the strip material falls just through the eye of the hook. Then you want to grab it with your fingernails and draw it back for about 20, 25 mil, something like that. Cut off a piece of shrink tubing about 20 mil in size. Slide your shrink tubing down just over the last turn on the knotless knot. Then it's a case of steaming it and bending it around your thumb. The shape of that bend is massively important. You've got to make sure that the bottom of that shrink tubing is lower than the hook point itself. So when that gets ejected out, that's already on the move and turning that hook point into the fish's mouth. Then it's just a case of sliding a tungsten dropper that about halfway down the rig, putting the tungsten anti-tangle sleeve on, tying it onto your swivel. I use a four-turn grinner knot, but obviously bud knots and that are okay. Then slide me tungsten anti-tangle back up over the knot. I put a blob of putty around the break in the coating and you always want to have about two, three mil of just strip back material that just gives it that little bit of free movement, gives it like this coring effect. Last little checks to do, just, just make sure that the shrink tubing is nice and straight down the back of the hook. Then just steam it all nice and straight. And uh, yeah, that's the noodle rig. I'm going to be whacking through these bad boys out tonight. Beautiful. Just clearing these last couple little bits of weed. Just sorting out the line lay. Should get away with that now, I reckon. Gonna get all rid of all this as well. It's drifted into the margin. Using this big storm pole. Not actually going to take it out. I'm going to push it over here into the edge. I don't like leaving big mounds all over the swims and that. End up with rats nesting them and all sorts.
Well, the rods are all out for the night. It's been a really long day, really. You know, just, just how hot it is. It's all muggy, mozzies everywhere. It's just been savage, but yeah, I've not been in too much of a rush. We've got, got the wedding done, found a spot out there, real nice clean area. Put a couple of noodles out there, probably 10, 12 spoms of a load of 16 mil sharps and pellet, quill liquids. Loaded it up. If, it, if them fish turn back up in that zone like they were this morning, this move is definitely going to pay off. I found a nice little zone down the right. You know what I'm like, you know, just climbing up the trees. Can't resist seeing a real nice tree to climb up. And when we all got up there and actually see a couple of really good fish sat under there. Got a bit further up that tree and I could see a nice spot just glowing, all nice sort of plateau, sort of slopes off down behind the weed. Uh, yeah, it was a mega little zone I thought I can wade to here. So yeah, ended up wading one round, a couple of handfuls of bait over the top of that. Only just got done. I uh, haven't been in any mega rush today, it's more just trying to fish for them feeding times. Really happy and we'll uh, yeah, see what the night in the morning brings. Well, hi I'm buzzing. I've got a big fish in the net. I don't want to tempt fate because I haven't weighed it or nothing yet, but it's a really big common. I've had to go down and wake up all the camera crews because it's not even midnight yet. Really seems like this move definitely paying off. Um, yeah, it's, it's not even 12 o'clock, so we can't be keeping a big fish like this overnight, especially this time of year. So we're going to get some footage and all of that and uh, get her back. So uh, yeah, let's see what we got. Thirty, just under forty pound, like thirty-nine, fourteen. I can't give myself forty pound on that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's not quite forty pound, but wow, who cares when they look like this? Obviously, probably one of the the eighty spawned out, no doubt. Absolutely buzzing with this. Was it? Yes. Thank you. 
Well, sessions go, it doesn't really get much better than that. You know, that, that common was really was the, the icing on the cake last night. That was a banger. Obviously, I had that big mirror. I just didn't expect it to go this way, especially with the conditions. It hasn't been easy. It's been over 30 degrees both days, and for me, in my experience, that can sometimes be against you. But yeah, it's been really good. It looks good for a bike still. You know, I've had a little bit of fizzing going on, a couple of liners this morning, so who knows? Hopefully, we can get a bike this morning. Uh, because it is really going to get really hot today. 38 degrees, hottest day ever recorded. So I just want to hopefully see out in the morning, maybe get a fish. But if not, I, I'm happy. Well, it's time to hit the road. Got 180 miles ahead of me, but it's more than worth the journey. You know, I've had a mega session. One just under 40, one just over 40. You can't ask for better than that. One thing's for sure, I'll definitely be coming back, you know, especially with it turning day ticket. 